Hello, I'm Angie, Field Application Engineer from Moxa Australia team. In this video, I'm going to introduce two seamless redundancy technologies called PRP and HSR. They are recommended by IEC 61A50 for substation automation networks. We will go through operation details, configuration steps, and verifying performance. Communication network redundancy is the key to building reliable automation system. And recovery time is how we normally measure effectiveness of a redundancy protocol. IEC 61A50-5 suggests different recovery time for different applications. For example, IED interlocking using GOOSE protocol requires less than 4 millisecond recovery, while sample values and the bus bar protections requires bumpless recovery. In other words, zero millisecond failover. PRP and HSR are defined in IEC 62439-3 and designed to fulfill this requirement. The two protocols are different topologies but share the same idea, which is packet duplication. Let's take a look on how it works in more details. PRP stands for Parallel Redundancy Protocol. As the name suggests, reliability of communication is based on the use of two parallel networks, called then A and then B. Each PRP device has port A and B, which are connected to correspondent LANs. If a device does not support PRP natively, it should be connected to PRP network using Rackbox. Every packet sent by PRP node is duplicated. One copy goes through then A, while the other goes through them B. During normal operation, the receiving side would get both copy but use only the one that came first and discard the one that came later. Creating and discarding duplicates is done using special hardware either in red box or embedded into a device. At any time, we can afford to lose one of the lands without any packet loss. So the network recovery is seamless. To demonstrate PRP, I'm going to use a substation demo kit from Moxa Ute. It has a DA820C industrial computer with native PRP HSR interface. So it has port A and port B. Then A is formed with a pair of PTG7728, which are the red box switches designed for power substation application, while then B is formed with thin rail compact switches from EDS G500 series that also comply to IEC 61A50-3. Finally, there are two PTG503 drug boxes which can be used to connect regular devices to this PRP network. Now, let's see some of the configuration steps for this topology. On the DA-A20C computer or an IED which has PRP HSR interface, we need to set up the mode to PRP. The computer comes with driver pre-installed, so I can launch Moxa PRP setting utility and configure the interface to PRP mode. If I used fiber port, I need to select the speed. From an operating system point of view, PRP interface is seen as a regular network interface, so we can see it in the network adapter list. All packets going out of this interface will be duplicated and it happens automatically on a hardware level. Then A and then B switches do not require any special configuration. I have already configured Turbo Ring version 2 protocol in each LAN, in case there is non-PRP traffic in those networks that also requires redundancy. For more details about ring-based redundancy protocols, please check another video. Next, I will configure the first PTG503 grab box to PRP mode by navigating to redundancy protocol and selecting PRP in the drop down menu. Besides, there are several parameters below. The entry forget time is the period during which the second copy should arrive in order to be properly discarded. Supervision frame is used for network monitoring purpose. So here you can specify its frequency and destination address. Link Fox path through is the feature that would disable interlink when both A and B ports are down. Finally, I used the same configuration for the second PTG503 unit. 
Now, I'm going to build a PRP network based on my topology. The switches are configured, so I can build a ring for then A using two cables and another two cables for the ring in then B. After the networks are ready, we can start connecting PRP devices. Let's start from DA820C, where port 8 goes to then A switch and port B goes to then B switch. We will do the same for the red boxes. A goes to then A and B goes to then B. It's important to connect port to correct then, because each copy is actually labeled, and wrong connection would cause errors. This is how this topology looks like in MXView1. This network management system shows devices and the links of different lengths with different colors. Green is used for then A, and blue is used for then B. I also connected my laptop to one of the rec boxes, so we can do a quick connectivity test using ping command. My laptop will be pinging the AA20C computer while I simulate failure scenarios. Let's disconnect one of the links from the computer directly. As you can see, we still have ping going through because we still have communication through them B. Now, let's restore that link and shut down one of the switches in them B. As you may expect, communication is not disrupted because we still have then A functioning. We can also verify that by stopping the ping command and confirming from the statistics that there was no packet loss during the test. In conclusion, PRP provides seamless redundancy in scenarios when one of the network fails. Another option to achieving zero millisecond recovery time is high availability seamless redundancy, or HSR for short. It could be more cost effective from wiring and device quantity perspective in small scale networks as it allowed us to use ring topology. The HSR module also sends duplicated packets from port A and B. Each node not only acts as a sender or receiver, but also propagates packets between A and B to form a ring topology. Once unicast packet reached its destination, that node stops further propagation. Similar to PRP, only one copy is used and the second one is discarded. Using HSR ring topology eliminates the need for network switches. However, all devices in the ring must support HSR due to the special frame format that will be considered abnormal by the regular Ethernet device. I will use DA820C, two PTG770A, and the rec boxes to build an HSR ring. Unlike the PTG7728 switches, DA820C and the rec boxes support PIP HSR already. Since there couldn't be any regular Ethernet node in the ring, I need to equip the switches with PIP HSR modules to make them HSR capable. After sliding in PRP HSR modules, giving in a couple of seconds to initialize, we turn PTG7728 into PRP HSR switches as they have a functionality equal to Rekbox with up to 24 interlink ports. If you prefer DIN rail form factor, we have another model called PTG510 that has 8 interlink ports and built-in PRP HSR capability. That's configured all devices to HSR mode now. To set up HSR on DA820C, we need to run Moxa PRP settings utility and set the mode to HSR from here. Next, we need to configure PTG7728 to HSR mode. Once the PRP HSR module is installed, you can find it in Communication Redundancy, IEC 62439-3 protocol, Status and Settings menu. Here, we set the protocol to HSR. We can keep the rest of the parameters, including entry forget time, supervision frame, life check interval, and destination address as default. These parameters are common for both HSR and PRP modes. I'm going to apply the same settings to another PTG7728, and we can proceed to configure PTG503 rec boxes. In PTG503 web UI, Configuration of PRP and HSR is in Redundancy Protocol menu. Here, we also set protocol to HSR and leave rest as default. You may have noticed that RSTP grouping can be enabled when HSR is selected. 
This is a special feature that allows integrating RSTP networks with HSR. I will repeat the same configuration steps for another Xbox to have it in HSR mode. Now our HSR devices are ready. We can continue to connect the cables. To form an HSR ring, port A of the node should be connected to port B of the neighbor device. Let's start from port A of DA820C. This goes to port B on top PTG7728. Then from A on this switch to B on PTG503. Next, port A to B on the other red box. Then from A back to B on bottom PTG7728. And finally, back to B on DAA20C. This completes our HSR ring. Here is how the HSR ring is shown in MX View 1. And you can see that my laptop is now connected to one of the rec boxes. Let's do a quick connectivity test by running ping command from the laptop to DAA20C, which has IP address of 192.168.127.100. I will unplug the cable between rec box and the switch. As expected, that doesn't cause any interruption in communication because we still have one copy going over the path clockwise from the rec box. Let's restore this and remove the power cable from the top PTG7728 unit. It doesn't go off immediately because the power supply is equipped with dying gas feature. That allows the switch to keep working for several seconds and notify the control system about power failure. Besides, you can always install a second power supply to have redundancy. Now that the unit is turned off, we can verify that it also didn't cause any communication issues. Once I stop ping command, we can confirm this by looking at statistics. There are more options when it comes to building larger scale networks with seamless redundancy. If you want to build a topology with multiple HSR rings, Quartbox functionality can be used to bridge rings together. And if you need to connect HSR to PRP, you can rely on the coupling mode of the red box or PRP HSR switch. Both PRP and HSR can provide bumpless recovery suggested by IEC 61850 for process and station buses. While PRP sends duplicated packets over two separate networks and allow using each LAN for regular communication as well. HSR is based on the ring where network switches are not required, but all devices have to be HSR compliant. Both protocols require specialized hardware to send and receive the packet, either built into IED or external like Redbox. The protocols can also be combined using coupling or quadbox to build large-scale topologies. If you are interested in learning more about PRP HSR and have more hands-on experience, please get in touch with your local Moksa representatives. Thanks for watching. See you next time.